Hi everybody, Steve from Steve's Makerspace. We are in P5JS and we're going to be working towards this thing. These are Truchet tiles as described by Christopher Carlson. I'll start off by showing you how to do this type of Truchet tile. We'll move on to this Truchet tile, then we'll get to this Truchet tile, and finally we'll end with this Truchet tile. A Truchet tile is a tile that can be turned and then it makes different patterns based on how the tiles are put together. The Truchet tile was first described in 1704 by Father Sebastian Truchet, a French Dominican priest. He was active in the fields of mathematics, hydraulics, typography. Apparently he designed most of the French canals. Besides this type of Truchet tiling, there's this and this. This is a famous 10 print pattern from the early Commodore 64. I covered the 10 print pattern and the triangles in my Making Simple Patterns video. I'll leave a link to that video in the video description. There will also be a link to a collection of code that I've created, Truchet tiles. Uh, so all of the things I'm going to be talking about today you'll be able to play with. So let's start with the simplest of these. Here I've drawn some lines so you can see what the tile actually is. This tile is drawing a curve from here to here and from here to here or it can be rotated. So when it's rotated, it draws a line here to here and here to here. So if we look at the code, we're creating two for loops, one for the x-axis, one for the y-axis. I'm telling it how many tiles I wanna go across, that's my num. So it's going from zero to num plus one and adding one each time. The size of the tile is being determined by the width divided by that number. Then we're gonna push and then translate to the i times the size and the j times the size. After we translate, we're gonna rotate and we wanna rotate only by 90 degrees. 90 degrees is pi times 0 0.5 uh, and so that is pi times 0 0.5 times 0, 1, 2, or 3. So I'm flooring a random four for that. Then I'm choosing a type of tile. So right now I'm only using one type of tile. Let me get rid of the square and we'll make a whole bunch more. So just doing that alone gives me this. Now another thing I'm doing here is my stroke weight is being determined by the size. My stroke weight is one quarter of the size, so if I change the size, the stroke weight changes with it. Let me add that square back in. The way I'm doing this is using an arc function. Let's say we've translated to right here in the center of this square. So we're gonna move over to the right by size divided by two, and then we're gonna go up by negative size divided by two. And the arc is going to be size, which seems a little odd since this seems to be half of size, but think about the arc going all the way around. That would be the entire size. So this is the X position, this is the Y position, this is the width, this is the height, and then the next one is where your arc starts and where your arc ends. The arc goes in a clockwise direction, so we're gonna start down here at pi times 0 0.5, that's 90 degrees. The uh, angles start at zero degrees, and then they go to pi times 0 0.5, and then to pi, so that's where this one goes from pi times 0 0.5 to pi. On this next arc, so we're going from negative pi times 0 0.5 to zero. And I don't need to worry about drawing this arc and this arc uh, because this is the same arc, it's just rotated 90 degrees. So we've got that tile done. Uh, let's do a different tile. So I've overridden the type here to be 1.9. So this is a line going this way and this way, two lines. The third tile is just two points and a line. So we've got a line going here, and then we're doing a point here and a point here. So with random at just one, we get this. If I change the randomness to two, I get this. Now I've got this first if statement going to 1.8, and the second one is to two. So I've only got the cross appearing occasionally. If I change this to 1.0, then you would get this. But I like having less crossover, so I just change this to 1.8. Now let's go up to 2.2, .2, 
and we get some that are dead ends. I'll hit go a few times. You can see what that looks like. I could change this randomness up to like 3.2 and you'd get a lot more dead ends. And you even get some dots occasionally because you've got two dead ends. So that's it for this truche tile simple wavy line. Now we're gonna take our wavy lines and kick it up a notch with some extra lines and some color. So as I've done many times before, I'm preloading a color table. I've got a CSV file with a table of color palettes. I'm preloading my color table and down here I'm choosing my palette. And then I'm gonna get colors from that color palette. We'll go to our function for get colors and I'm pulling the information from the color table, the H, the S, the B, and then I'm putting those colors into an array. So after I've got my palette, uh, after this, I'm gonna have cull zero is gonna be the first color in whatever my color palette is, and then cull one is gonna be a color for the second color in my color palette and so forth. Since my color table is using HSB colors, I'm switching to color mode HSB. Um, I'm also doing a stroke cap square. If I don't do stroke cap square, I get something like this, which is also interesting, but not what I was going for. Normally at the end of a stroke, it has sort of a bulbous end to it. And in this case, I'm saying, no, I want to cut off the end of the stroke. So my first color that I'm gonna use is for the background. So I'm using call zero for that. Now this whole section, let me just comment this out for a second. It's not gonna change very much. So I'll come back to that in a minute. But we're gonna be doing our for loop as before. We push, we translate, we rotate, we do our stroke weight. And before this is where we would have been doing our two arcs. Uh, but instead of doing them up here, I'm putting them in a separate function and I'm calling it make curve. So then we go to our make curve function, and this is where we do the arcs. Now before we do that curve, we're doing our stroke weight, and we're doing size divided by 1.8 for our stroke weight. So that's going to be a really thick stroke weight, and we're going to use color number one for that stroke. So we make that curve, and then we do a new stroke weight, and we're dividing size divided by 3.2 this time, so that's not quite as thick, and we're doing color number two, and then we call the make curve function again. So we're not changing whatever tile we're using or the rotation, we're just drawing another curve on top of the thicker curve. So after that, we do the stroke weight again, this time dividing by 10, so now we're gonna have an even thinner curve, and then we do uh, color number three, and then we make curve. So that's pretty much it. Now, one thing I noticed was we're getting some lines in here, if you can see that. So I was trying to get rid of those lines, and that's why I added these points. So this does, goes through the for loop, and it's just adding points to the square at the top, left, right, and bottom to try to get rid of some of those lines that are appearing. And I think it does okay, but you can still see some lines. It, it helps a little bit. Now what I tried to do at first was to do these points afterwards thinking that would help get rid of these lines. So I get this when I do that, which is interesting, but obviously not what I was going for. So that is it for the Truche tiles with multiple wavy lines. Now for this one, this is an implementation of Christopher Carlson's Truche tiles. This is an article on how to do these articles by Christopher Carlson. I will leave a link to this article in the video description. Let's start with the tile types. Uh, there's these curves, which I've already implemented just now. Uh, and then this curve here, which I also showed you before. Then he's got these dots. I think I decided not to do the dots. Then there's the cross. I did that one with you. Uh, and then this one, which is actually a curve, a curve, a curve, and then a cross. And then a curve and two dots. And then this, which is a curve, a curve, a line, and a dot. 
And so not counting this one, this is really just six different tiles. So this works pretty much the same as I was showing you before. We've got a number of tiles. We've got our for loop. We are pushing and translating and rotating. The first type is the two arcs, which is the same as I showed you before. The second type is two points on a line. The third type is two lines making a cross. The fourth type is an arc and two points. Fifth type, uh, four arcs and two lines. That's going to be this thing right here. The sixth type, two arcs, a line, and a point. That's this one. Oh yeah, and then I decided to do one more, which is this thing, but with a white point in the center of it. So that is pretty much it, but I've added something else to this. This is right now I'm showing you complete randomness, but we can use Perlin noise to affect the rotation of the tiles and also the type of tiles that are being used so that certain rotations or tile types will repeat in certain places. So I've got a resolution of 0 0.008 and I'm using the same resolution for each of these. I could have used two different resolutions if I wanted to. Noise in, I believe I'm using for the type. Noise N2, I'm using for the rotation. So let me take off this one, which is just rotating uh, randomly. Now notice a couple of things about how I'm using the noise. Uh, I'm subtracting 0.2 from the noise value, and that is because the noise value is supposed to be between 0 and 1, but it tends to actually be uh, between 0 0.2 and 0 0.8, and rarely goes below 0 0.2 or above 0 0.8. So if I want a wider variety uh, from my noise, then I'm going to subtract 0 0.2. And then instead of multiplying by 4, which is what you would think you would do in order to get uh, the noise that you want, I'm going to multiply by 8 to get me a wider range of rotations. Let me do a higher number of tiles. Let's override the type to 0 0.5. So it's only going to give me number one type. And I think you'll see that there are repeating rotations happening. So if I were to go back to complete randomness, it would look like this. But if I'm using the noise instead for the rotation, then it's looking like this. So let me put the type back to random. And now I'm also going to use the noise. Uh, I don't want to use the same noise field, so I'm adding 10,000 to each of these. And so if I let noise decide on the type, oh yeah, this is the one I'm using for rotation. This is the one I'm using for type. Uh, so again, I'm subtracting by 0.2. Uh, instead of multiplying by 7, which you think I would normally do, I'm going to multiply by 14. Uh, and that is actually going to get me all the numbers between 0 and 7 showing up. So I'll uncomment this where I'm multiplying 14 times n, and you can see this happens. So I'll hit play a few times, and you can see some uh, repeating motifs, which is interesting. I could also just combine those two ideas of complete randomness and using noise motif. And so this one is combining the two. So I'm using the noise, but multiplying that by 0.8. And then I'm doing the random 7 and multiplying that by 0.2. So I'm getting 80% noise is deciding on the type. And 20% randomness is deciding on the type. So I'll hit play a few times. And here we've got noise is deciding on the rotation and 80% noise is deciding on the type. I've got here where I can print to console the type that's being decided. Let me uncomment this out. So we can scan through the types that are being decided. And you can see that even though I've got uh, n times 14, I'm still only getting numbers that are just barely approaching 7. Here I've got a number that just went over 7 a little bit. Let's see what happens if we override some of these types. I already did 0 0.5, and we got that. If I do type 1.5, we get that. Type 2.5, 3.5, 4.5, 5.5, 6.5, 7.5, 8.5, 9.5, 10.5, 11.5, 12.5, 13.5, 14.5, 15.5, 16.5, 
5.5, oh, same thing. Okay, I think we're done with that, but there's more. It's going to get a, a little bit more complicated with this next one. Um, if you've liked this video so far, please give it a like. Let's go back to Christopher Carlson's article because there's something more special going on that I haven't talked about yet. Uh, he's doing different sized tiles. He's got a large tile, a medium tile, and a little bitty tile. Now, in my code, I've only implemented two sizes instead of three sizes. It was just going to be a little more complicated to do three sizes, but you can see that the tiles fit together. You've got this large tile and two medium-sized tiles next to it. But what may surprise you is that the colors are actually alternating. Uh, this is the curve, and it's black here on this tile, but on this tile, the curve is white. So you've got a black background with white curves, and on this one, you've got a white background with black curves. Also, for this to work properly, the stroke weight has to be exactly one-third the size of the tile in order for this to flow together nicely. The other thing is, if you notice here, that the tiles, you can't just place them willy-nilly. If I do a large tile, I can't put a smaller tile right on top of it so that it it's only in this corner right here. That means I need to remember where I'm putting my large tiles. So I'm gonna get some interesting new results when I combine the larger tiles with the medium-sized tiles, as you can see. So I'm gonna be placing the large tiles first, but because I need to remember where those large tiles have been placed, I need to store that information into an array. So I've got a tile array so in the beginning, we're choosing our size is width divided by the number, which is the same as before. But because we're doing a large tile, we're going to do a new size, and that's going to be size times 2. And I've got this thing that says tile size equals 3. This just means whether I'm using the large tile or the medium tile. So for placing my large tiles, I'm going to go through my array as before, except I'm going to be adding two each time instead of just adding one because these large tiles are twice the size of the medium-sized tiles. And then because I don't want large tiles everywhere, I'm only going to have two-fifths of the time our large tile is going to be placed. And if a large tile is placed, I'm going to push information into the array about the I and the J position. So what I'm pushing into the array are four different positions because the large tile takes up four smaller tile positions. I'm putting in I plus dash plus J. So if we're starting out at position zero, zero, this is gonna be pushing into this array some text that is zero dash zero. And then I'm gonna push in the position right next to that. And that is I plus one, plus dash j. So if the last one was 0 dash 0, this is going to show up as 1 dash 0. And then I'm pushing in the position that's right below. I think this might be easier if I refer to this. Uh, so this is the large tile right here. And I'm first putting in this position into the array, then this position. And now here, I'm putting in this position into the array. So this is I and J plus one. And then the, finally I put in this one, which is I plus one and J plus one. In order for this to go in as text properly, I had to put the J plus one in parentheses. Otherwise, if I don't put this in parentheses, this will show up in the text as one dash zero one. All right, is that clear as mud? So we pushed the four positions into the array, and then we go to make tile. So let's go to the make tile, and I'm using noise again. I'm pushing. I've got if the tile size is three, which means it's a big tile, I'm going to translate, and here I've got to translate a little differently than I do for the smaller tiles. The thing is with a large tile, if I translate, I'm going to wind up being right here. Say this is my large tile, and I actually want to be here. 
So I'm translating to I times size plus size divided by two and J times size plus size divided by two. Then because I've got two different colors, a black on a white and a white on a black, I'm going to do a rectangle first. I'm doing my rectangle in black and I'm doing my stroke in white. And another thing I have to do, which took me a while to figure out, uh, for it to look good, I have to put some points along the edges of my large tile. Let me show you what happens if I don't put those points along the edges. It winds up looking like this. You can see these squares. Um, it's, it's much different, not as cool looking. So we'll put these points back. So then um, let's skip over this for now because we're still drawing our large tiles. And this is for the medium sized tile. So after we do those points, the rest of it is pretty much the same as before. We're rotating, we're choosing a type, and we're doing our different types of tiles. So we do that for the large tiles. And then we come back here. And for the new tiles, we're going to use the original size instead of size times two. And we're changing the tile size. Um, this is just telling the code whether we're using a large tile or a medium tile. And then we're going to go through our for loop. This time, instead of adding two, we're just adding one to each time. But we're only going to do a tile if the array does not include this position. So we're checking here, does the array include this position of i plus j? If it does not include that position, then we're going to make the tile. So then we go down, down to make tile, and we can skip this because this is for the large tile. So else, meaning we're in the mid-size tile, we don't need to do these points. We're translating to the regular way we do translating. And we're going to make a white rectangle. And then we're going to change to a black stroke. And then the rest of it is pretty much the same as before. Uh, we're rotating, we're choosing our type, etc. So that is it. I'm using a combination of noise to decide on the rotation. 80% noise and then 20% is random. Uh, again, with the type, I'm using 80% noise and 20% random to decide on the type of tile. So we'll hit go a few times and you can see the different variations that happen. That was kind of interesting. So that is it. I've gone over all the code. I hope this has been interesting. If you've liked this video, you can give it a like. Consider subscribing to the channel. Ring the bell for notifications. Comments are always welcome. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. Steve's Makerspace.